This scandal is of epic proportions. And I mean epic proportions. Coming up on British Thought Leaders, Noel Wilcox talks about the child maintenance service. Parents are not criminals, but they've been treated like criminals. Noel says this government body uses extreme powers to force parents to pay billions that they don't owe. How on earth was that legislation passed through Parliament? I have no idea whatsoever. That goes against all um, mechanisms of natural justice. That goes against the right to a fair trial and it violates all human rights. Noel shares evidence that over a thousand victims of this scandal commit suicide every year. The system isn't working and thousands of paying parents are taking their own lives. It's a very, very serious problem and nobody's talking about it. Welcome to British Thought Leaders, I'm Lee Hall. Today I'm sitting down with Noel Wilcox from Reform UK. Noel, thanks for joining us. My pleasure, Lee. So, can you give us a brief intro to what the CMS is, how many people use it, and how you got involved in campaigning on this? Okay, so the Child Maintenance Service um, took over from its predecessor, which was the Child Support Agency, which a lot of people might know, um, you know, going back to sort of like 1993, 2012. And the Child Support Agency was introduced to sort out financial arrangements between uh, parents once they'd separated or whatever might have happened, you know, between them. And so how did you get in involved? In how did I get involved? So subsequently I had a daughter that I was unable to see through the family courts for no viable legal reason whatsoever. Um, the child maintenance service got involved in my life and I quickly established that they were plucking figures out of thin air. So I mean, the issue you're talking about is not whether parents should support their children or not, but the, the CSA inflated these figures between 1993 and 2011. They then passed on this debt to the CMS. They became the CMS. The CMS have these really massive enforcement powers to get parents to pay what are somewhat fictitious debts. I mean, what kind of figures are we talking? So it was established in 2011 by Noel Shanahan, who was the director of the Child Maintenance Service that the debt of 3.8 billion was uncollectible because all of, all of the figures that had gone into the arrears balance were somewhat inflated by about 300%. And what they did, they used the inflation technique as a lever to force a paying parent to come to them with whatever information that they wanted. So once that parent had come forwards and started making the payments or uh, they were in, in some form of uh, dialogue with the child maintenance service or the CSA, if they were paying £100 a week and they'd been estimated at £300 a week, that £200 a week would accrue in that arrears balance, which then built that debt up to £3.798 billion. Pounds. I mean, this isn't a theory. We have a, a clip here of Noel Shannon mm -hmm. talking at a Department of Work and Pension Select Committee in 2011. Mm -hmm. the, the work that the, the, the department has done, CMEC has done, identifies that going back many years, uh, we used to create something called an interim uh, maintenance uh, uh, arrangement. Essentially, it was a number that was brought up to say to the non-resident parent, this is how much you'll have to pay. Mm. Actually used as a bit of a lever when they wouldn't give us mm. their pay and information, which mm. we have to ask for. Mm. So actually, it was inflated. It seems to be inflated by about 300%. So when they didn't pay, all those numbers have gone into the arrears. So the truth is actually, mm. those arrears are somewhat inflated because of the tools that were used you know, up to 18 mm. years ago. So I mean, what we're looking at here is they inflated the figures by 300% to basically scare parents into paying. Mm. I mean, can, you, can you just talk us through that again? Because it's, so, it's so hard to believe. It, 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 exactly. It's, you know, it's really difficult to believe. I mean, when you look at from a, a, a criminal aspect, to inflate something is actually a criminal offence. And what deeply troubles me in this oral hearing is the flippant approach by everybody around the table. You know, nobody kind of looks over their glasses or whatever it might be and say, sorry, can I just confirm? 
that this is what you were doing. You know, to, to do that, from my understanding of the law, it, it, it's a fraudulent act. Would you agree that that's, that is a fraudulent act? I can't see any reason for doing that. Yeah. HMRC do something along those lines, but then they take the figure back down, don't they? Yeah, they, they, yeah. Once you've uh, once you've contacted HMRC and you've agreed your financial arrangements with them, then they make the necessary uh, corrections. So the DWP tried to deploy that tactic, but they didn't make the corrections, and that is a serious, serious problem. And your viewers might be sort of thinking to themselves, "Yeah, but that happened in 2011. Why is that relevant today?" Because of the testimonies and the cases that I've researched, and certainly a lot of people that have reached out to me, what they're claiming is, and what they're alleging against the DWP, that is that they're paying everything that they've been asked to pay, but then all of a sudden they'll wake up in the morning, they'll go on their portal, and they will have thousands of pounds of these arrears that have been added to their accounts. With absolutely no explanation of how they've got there, with no breakdown, the CMS will say, we, we don't need to give you a breakdown. So if you've got the arrears on your account, you have to pay it. And if you don't pay it, then we're going to use our enforcement powers to bully you to pay it. Incredible. So there's also another method of looking at more historical earnings rather than more recent earnings, isn't there? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, the law states that they have to use the most recent tax year. And that is in uh, case law, where that was... Uh, where a judge had clearly stated in the upper tier tribunals. So, I mean, that's, you know, quite, quite an established court, you know, where um, a lead judge has said that you have to use the correct data. And he's actually gone through a process where the CMS should be able to obtain what your live data is. But many parents who contact me show sheer frustration at the fact that the CMS just refused point blank to listen to the evidence that they're putting forwards to them. And these are all parents that want to pay, but they want to pay the correct amount. And it's very easy for the child maintenance service and the, and the old CSA to, to, to pump this soundbite out there of their beat dads. So, and they, it's easy for them make, to make false claims that billions of pounds are owed because they're simply not. These are all fabricated debts. And they use a very complex technique or system to inflate incomes now. And that's with current income checks, which is a policy that the DWP, which is supposed to be there to validate incomes. But yet again, what a lot of parent, uh, paying parents are coming forwards and saying is that if they get a commission one month or they get a dividend or a bonus, the CMS will home in on that month, so they'll cherry pick the month as opposed to the actual tax year. Right, so it's much higher. Yeah, so it'll be much, much higher. And then what they'll do is they will forecast their earnings for the next 12 months, which creates the arrears. But also what they're doing is, is they're backdating it to the last tax year, which gives the arrears on that account. So in essence, it looks like to me what they're doing is they're doing the same thing, they're just doing it differently. The National Audit Office expressed serious concerns about the CMS historical financial statements. We've got another clip here from another uh, Work and Pension Select Committee in 2022. Are you satisfied that the large number of people saying that there, there is a fictitious debt are, are mistaken, that actually if the Child Maintenance Service is pursuing a debt, then it's almost certainly accurate? No, we're not satisfied of that. You know, we wouldn't necessarily use the word fictitious. However, it is. It does mean that people are being pursued for debts that there is not the evidence to substantiate that they owe. Yeah. So Joshua Redway, who was the director of the Child Maintenance Service, you know, he he clearly states in 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 this video that he uh, is very concerned regarding the fact that these calculations are just not correct. Mm. And yes, he says we wouldn't use the word fictitious, but we would certainly say that parents are being pursued for debts where there's no evidence to substantiate that they owe. That's really serious. That is such a serious statement. And yet again, nobody in this select committee 
is taking control of this situation. And I can't understand understand why. I'm absolutely bamboozled that in all of these oral hearings, the Work and Pension Select Committees, that we're establishing that this is what is going on, which is a serious is issue. And it's a very, very serious problem that's gone on now systematically for the last three decades. And it's just not been addressed. And it's getting worse and worse and worse. So if someone doesn't pay their, their child maintenance, the C CMS issue this liability order, mm. which tells the court to collect the money. But uh, as we know, they've inflated the amounts that parents have to pay. So if a parent receives a request, a liability order, to pay this massive amount, they can challenge it in a court, right? That's absolutely not correct. Right. So <laughs> when you look at the Child Support Act, Section 33, subsection 4, of that act, it precludes the justices and the magistrates or the sheriff from checking the calculations of the child maintenance service. Really? That's incredible. Absolutely incredible. How on earth was that legislation passed through Parliament? I have no idea whatsoever. That goes against all um, mechanisms of natural justice, that goes against the right to a fair trial, and it violates all human rights. So we know that these figures are being inflated. It's discussed on government record by Noel Shanahan. Mm -hmm. um, but a judge can't even challenge in a court the, the figures that come through on the liability order. No. Judges keep saying that we've got no jurisdiction. We have no jurisdiction over arrears and that they can't check the calculations of the CMS. The only thing that the judge can establish is that you are the father of that child or you're the mother of that child. Because yes, this predominantly uh, affects fathers, but also women are, uh, are massively affected by this as well. So how powerful is the CMS? What enforcement powers oh, does it have? I mean, draconian enforcement is an understatement. They have extreme enforcement powers the likes that I cannot understand how this is completely unregulated and that they're completely unaccountable to anybody. So the sort of enforcement powers that we're talking about is that they can go direct to your bank and they can take any amount of money out of your bank account. Mm. Yes, which is called a lump sums uh, deductions, deductions order. They can go to your employer and they can take up to 40% of your salary, but it has been known that they're taking over 40% of your salary as well but the law states that they're not allowed to take more than 40%. But I have seen a lot of cases where the 40% is being deducted. And the thing that keeps being highlighted to me is that employers and paying parents are, are just absolutely petrified of the child maintenance service with this bullying approach. I mean, it's these letters that come through um, uh, uh, the letterbox, whether it's, it's got the crown seal on it, and... It's just the nature and, and, and how they're written and just the bullying approach. And employers don't want all, the, all these problems, so they're just going to pay them whatever they want. You know, when they're being threatened with £10,000 fines, that if they don't pay that amount of mon money to the DWP, employers are just not going to argue with that. Who takes on the state? At the end of the day, no matter what country you live in, when the state comes after you if you're a criminal, it's an unpleasant experience extremely unpleasant because right then your liberties and your freedoms are being removed from you and rightfully so if you have committed a crime but parents are not criminals but they're being treated like criminals absolutely in fact criminals get a right to a fair trial terrorists get a right to a fair trial but if you're a paying parent you have absolutely no mechanism to challenge what the state is saying that you owe there are also some enforcement powers to do with passports and driving licences. Yes, so uh, the CMS can put a charging order on your property and force the sale of that property. Mm. And at no time in that complex procedure can anybody check these calculations. So even when it gets, gets to the county court, because the liability order has already been served, when it gets to the county court, a judge still can't check those calculations but they're gonna force the sale of your property. They can remove driving licenses, they can uh, remove your passport. So you're almost becoming a non-citizen, you have no house, no passport, no driving license. For a debt that you don't owe. And also, you will be sent to prison. Really? Yes. Do, do you know of people who've been sent I know, to I know of people that have been sent to prison, I've got the statistics. And I also know, which is still a prison sentence, 
a, a number of pain parents that have had um, non-custodial sentences as well, but it's still a sentence. Incredible. People being sent to prison when we know that these figures have been inflated is admitted on record. I do know of cases where people have been sent to prison where the child is not theirs. Really? Yeah. There is cases of that. And I know a current case at the moment um, where a certain gentleman doesn't even have a child, but he's had money removed via a DEO, a deductions earning order, and he's an oil rigger. So he was unaware that these payments were being taken out of his salary and he doesn't even have a child. He doesn't know who, this, who the woman is. He's checked the birth certificate and on the birth certificate, it categorically states who the mother and the father are of this child that is allegedly his. He has sent that birth certificate because he went in and, and got it via public records. He sent that certificate into the DWP and the DWP said that's a fraudulent document. We're not accepting it. These are horrific and tragic cases of what is going on. It's absolutely tragic what is going on. The former government minister, Anne Widdicombe, said the evidence of the CMS's incompetence is overwhelming. Do you think this is just mass incompetence? Do you think there's more to it than that? There's negligence, and then there's what I perceive to be deliberate. And I do believe that they're completely incompetent in everything that they do, every system that they use. I, I, I do believe that they're totally incompetent. But then also I do believe that there's deliberate acts. Because how can you pull a debt that's never existed into a new system and start collecting money on that, on, 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 on that debt? That, that, that's not negligence. How can that be negligent? That surely is deliberate. We talked about these historical debts. Do you know of any examples of the CMS inflating the figures in more recent times? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I'm on, I'm on a lot of uh, Facebook groups. I get uh, invited to a lot of Facebook groups. And all the time you see current paying parents that are paying everything that they've been asked and then all of a sudden they've got arrears on their account. And, the, and, and, and a big complaint that I keep seeing from the receiving parent is that they're not getting the money. And I know of a lot of cases where evidence has been provided to me that money's been collected but has not been passed on yeah, to the receiving parent. Now, a freedom of information was done and how many instances do you think, from what you know about the CMS, how many instances do you think where this has happened, where the money was collected but not passed on to the receiving parent? 100. 24,500 cases. Really? 24,500 cases in the last year that was assessed by the NAO. Now, in that year, what happened, I was reading the NAO reports because I scrutinised them, and it said that a receipt was found, but had not been paid on to the receiving parent. The NAO flagged this with the CMS and the CMS conducted an investigation. And the CMS had stated that they had um, found other instances of where this had happened. Other instances. So the freedom of information was done. And now we've quickly established that it was 24 and a half thousand cases. So you keep hearing a lot of the time the receiving parent who's constantly kicking off saying, I'm not getting no money, I'm not getting no money, and they seem to be hating their partner, which is predominantly men. And you can see a lot of poison because they're not, but the money is being collected and the money is being paid. It's not being passed on. So the whole system is an absolute disgrace. And how they can keep putting these sound bites out there that they're lifting 160,000 children out of poverty and I'm yet to see the data for that um, and that there's 10,000 parents who just don't pay I'd love to see the data for that how can you not pay when they've got those enforcement powers mm. unless you don't exist there's no way of them not collecting that money so the government recently did a consultation asking the public what they thought about the child maintenance enforcement um, I think the response was published on the 12th of February. 
What did the consultation find? So the bill was pushed through and what what has happened is that they have the, the government now has said that they're going to reduce the enforcement process of liability orders from six months down to six weeks. And the appeals process that I've seen in there is that once that assessment has been made, you've got seven days to appeal it. That's not long at all. Seven days. Seven days. So you, I mean, what happens if you're on holiday or what happens if you're working away from home or whatever it, or whatever it might be? And it's from the date that the letter is sent. So if it's lost in the post. So if it's lost in the post, you've lost your right to appeal. And then they can process their own liability orders. It's an administrative order. So now... Not that there was any checks and balances anyway, they can completely bypass the whole judicial system. It's mind boggling, isn't it? That this is being allowed to happen. I mean, and the United Kingdom promotes itself around the world that we're the cornerstone of democracy. Really? Do you think the CMS is fixable? No, 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 it's not. I mean, the culture of the DWP the culture of the child maintenance service, this issue has gone on for three decades. I don't believe that it is. And this is a failing entity. This has failed since its inception as the child support agency, its predecessor, the, ch uh, the child maintenance service, it constantly fails. But it's costing the British taxpayer roughly between three to 400 million pounds a year to operate this department. You know, the way I see it, you can introduce a hundred enforcement powers and you can bring in as much, but if people don't have the money to pay what you're asking them to pay and you're driving paying parents into poverty, how is that beneficial to the child? Because amongst all of this, whilst all this inner fighting and this, uh, this poison that I see that's going on and this hatred, Amongst all of this, who is ultimately suffering? The children. Because mum and dad are so busy fighting over money, mum and dad are so busy fighting with the system, so just in those two areas there that run parallel to each other, how on earth is that beneficial to the child? I don't understand. There's gotta be a simpler, much more affordable, easier way of doing this. And nobody's saying that any parents should avoid paying their financial responsibilities, nobody's saying that, but it's got to be a much fairer way. And we've got to bring parents together, unite together, if that's through mediation or whatever, you know, I, I, I really don't know. But, you know, you've got to bring people together and not drive them apart. And that's what the CMS is doing because it incentivizes the paying parent, sorry, the, the, the receiving parent to get as much as they can out of the paying parent. By refusing contact, by refusing nights, they get more money. So that incentivizes what we're seeing currently through the family courts and the child maintenance service. It's a huge widespread issue, a massive, massive issue that's just not been addressed. And what we're seeing is social devastation, social breakdown in our societies at the moment because of the whole way that the family unit is treated here in the United Kingdom. There's no support mechanisms. It, once you get involved with child protection services, the family courts, child maintenance service, it's all mudslinging. So when the CMS come knocking for these um, amounts that have been inflated and the parent can't pay them, what, what kind of reaction do we get from the parents? Well, sheer frustration for one. Um, and because of the financial pressures, it's being reported and it's been alleged that there's thousands of suicides that are attributed to the child maintenance service. And we know this because in the oral hearings in 2022, Debbie Abrahams, who was an MP, she confronted Arling Sugden, who was the director of the child maintenance service at the time. And Debbie was cross-examining her as to what happens when a paying parent commits suicide. They hold an internal review that is not published anywhere. Surely that's marking your own homework. Exactly. 
something as important as this, even if the, even if the system worked perfectly and everything was being conformed to, all the legislation, and, you, and if paying parents were still committing suicide, there would have to be an investigation into that. But the system isn't working and thousands of paying parents are taking their own lives. It's a very, very serious problem and nobody's talking about it. And everyone who, who's involved in these select committees and these oral hearings, and they're so flippant. And this is what I can't understand. Everybody's response is just completely flippant. And why? Because it seems to me that the establishment, and certainly the government, have pumped this narrative out there that fathers just don't want to pay for their children and that they're woman beaters. It's wrong. It's just completely wrong. Brian Hudson did some freedom of information requests and found that the mortality rate for these paying parents is over 14 times the national average. It's a massive figure. Do you have any examples of, of parents who have taken their lives because of this? Uh, there's a very high profile case of Gavin Briggs and his father, Ian Briggs, I'm in quite close contact with. And I mean, this man's life has been absolutely destroyed by what's happened, by the death of his son. Um, and I have spoken about this, that Gavin's income was inflated to 76 and a half thousand pounds and he was given nearly 17,000 pounds of arrears, just shy of 17,000 pounds of fictitious arrears. Mm. And Gavin numerous times contacted the CMS and they refused to adjust the calculations. And Gavin had got himself into such a dark place that he bought a disposable barbecue. Um, he lit it in his car, drove off into a field and sat there and poisoned himself. So he, he couldn't afford to pay to the degree that he just felt there was no other They were going out. to leave him with £150 a month to live on. Really? Yeah. £150 a month. There's another case of Johnny O'Neill and he was on a DEO. The amount of times that this man had contacted the CMS, begging them and pleading with them and the family begging these people to adjust the calculations and look at his case and they refused to do it. And then unfortunately, Johnny took his own life as well and left his sister and his mother with their lives completely turned upside down now. And these are just, you know, these are one of many. And the Hudson report that you're referring to, yes, he has, he has concluded that paying parents with arrears are 14 times more likely to be dead. And he's also concluded that it's 1,013 paying parents annually have taken their lives as well. Wow, that's a massive figure. It's a humongous figure. And he has challenged a lot of people and nobody has challenged his study that he's done. He's a very clever man, Brian. Very, very clever man. And how he's put that study together. And I do believe that mathematicians and professors have actually looked at the report and they've actually come to the same conclusions with the figures that he's produced, that it is fair and it is accurate. So why is this not being addressed? Mm. If the Hudson report is correct and the mortality rate is of 1,013 paying parents taking their lives annually, that, why, is, why is it something not being done about it? I know many paying parents who've contacted the National Fraud Line They've contacted the police. They've contacted the National Crime Agency. They've contacted the National Audit Office. And they keep saying it's a civil matter. Mm. I can't understand how it's a civil matter if this fraudulent debt has been carried over into the child maintenance service. They're distributing that debt onto paying parents' accounts. And as a result of that, they're taking their own lives why is that not being investigated by the authorities, by the appropriate authorities? Why is it not being suspended pending an independent investigation? 
I, I, I just can't work these things out. So it's not they're not pushing back and saying, oh, it's, it's a real debt. They're admitting that it's a fictitious debt and still it carries on. And it carries on. And it's being allowed to carry on. And it's being supported to carry on. So Gingerbread, and who is the uh, receiving parents charity, um, they, they have been pushing for higher enforcement powers, constantly pushing for more enforcement powers. They want paying parents to really being start, uh, sent to prison. Siobhan Bailey, who was the MP who campaigned for more enforcement powers and got this bill pushed through, they've all been present at these hearings. Why are they pushing this narrative? I, I just can't understand, I'm bamboozled. That somebody, you know, regardless of, 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 of what side of the fence that you sit on, but somebody's not actually come out and said, whoa, we need to stop this and there needs to be an investigation to find out exactly what is going on. So we mentioned uh, Anne Whittacombe, there's also Sir Alan Campbell, a very senior MP, calling for a full public inquiry into this. Do you think this is going to blow up like the post office scandal did? I think the post office scandal in relation to this is the warm up. This scandal is of epic proportions. And I mean epic proportions. This is not just a computer system that is getting things wrong. This is not a computer system. And I'm not saying that anything that happened to these posties was uh, in any way uh, not as important as what is going on, because I do believe that there were suicides with the post office scandal. And the fact that the state was coming after people for fictitious debts. So we know it goes on. And we know that there's no recourse for people to deal with this. And exactly the same is happening, but on a much larger scale. And the thing is with the Hudson report, when COVID, uh, when, when the lockdowns came, obviously the enforcement action had dropped by 24%. Right. So did the mortality rate. Right. So there's got to be a direct connection there, hasn't there? And that was from the Office of National Statistics. What do you hope to see happen next? I believe that there needs to be an independent inquiry and I would like to see the immediate suspension of the child maintenance service. And if there has been any criminal conduct or misconduct in a public office, then I believe that people need to be sent to prison. No, Wilcox, thanks for joining us. My pleasure.